Hi, my name is Laura Lee, and this is It's Not About Food. So it's not about food, and it's not about weight. What is it about? Everything else. Because it's never ever about food, or weight, never ever, not even, one time, not ever, ever, ever. Hi, this is Laura Lee Rourke. I am the co-creator of the Body Love Cards. One of the cards that we're talking about today is called Purpose. And on the front of the card, the goddess and her spirit animal are sort of walking up a sort of a hill or a little mountain. The sun is shining, the moon is out, flowers and green. Looks kind of, kind of like Northern California. And uh, they're walking up this hill. They're not trudging up the hill, but they're just walking up the hill sort of with purpose and togetherness and being with each other. So the story of this card is following our purpose leads us to the path that feeds our soul. We all possess unique gifts and we all have the need to express these gifts. To find our calling is to find the path of our hearts, the way of life that makes us feel alive and glad to be here. Over time, we may find many different paths, small and large. We find our calling by listening to our inner voice and doing what feels right and true to ourselves. So for me, this card is about just listening to myself inside, the, the heart and soul of me, if you will, to find what it is that is my true joy to, to live through. And when I was suffering from an eating disorder, I thought that my purpose was to be a very small size, and that was pretty much it. From that, then I would be happy and I would do all these great things. And it was exactly Not that. (laughs) It was to find my calling. And from there, I would find my purpose. I would know what to do. I would know how to eat. I would know how to be. I would know how to take care of myself. I would know how to have compassion and love and respect for myself. So it was a much bigger thing. I, I thought when I recovered from my eating disorder that it would just mean that I would no longer suffer from um, food and weight. But it opened up a whole other world for me that I've been on that path since then. And I would have never thought that in a million years. I really thought that I was just going to be Well, first of all, I just thought I would have this issue forever. I would never get over it. But if I did get over it, I would be a better dieter. (laughs) I would be a better, I would be, uh, I would be a better gym goer, you know, that that's what I would be. I had no idea that I would become a better person and I would be more myself as, as a person, the true person that I am. And it's really true that following my purpose led me a lot of different ways. We use the spiral of getting on the spiral and doing our little life. And then a stressor comes up and we're kind of knocked back or knocked sideways. But we know how to work ourselves out of that. And so we just go around the spiral because there's always going to be a stressor. There's always going to be something that will happen. But I just have more tools in my toolbox. You know, I'm a bigger... Uh, I have a, many more things I can do when I'm stressed out or tired. Or, for instance, I can go to sleep when I'm tired instead of staying, <laughs> drinking another cup of coffee and staying up and working more. So those were little things that I found out about how to just take a sort of inventory of where I am and then find out how to take care of myself about that. But I love this last part of this. We find our our calling by listening to our inner voice and doing what feels right and true to ourselves. And that doesn't mean that that's right and true to anyone else but me. And I found that unlike what I had been taught almost all my life in the culture we live in, that I needed to do what feels right and true to 
uh, other people much more learned than me or bigger than me or more in charge of me. But it was really about myself. What did I want to do? What was my path? So to talk about this great idea of having purpose and how do you find yourself on your path and what do you do with that? Uh, I have Connie with me today, the the founder of the co-founder of Body Positive, which is a great organization and has helped so many people, little kids, medium medium kids and old kids, <laughs> adults <laughs> in this whole issue. Really appreciate her being here today. I'm glad that she's here and I'm gonna let her tell you about herself and then we'll talk about purpose. Well, thank you, Laurelie. I am deeply honored to be here today. And what I love about life is that it brings experiences to us right when we need them. Yep. So sitting here with you today and talking about purpose is really important for me because what I think about purpose, I'll get back to my story in a minute, but what I think about purpose and what I've learned is that it, as you talked about with the spiral, it just keeps coming up. So yeah. I'm at a point right now where thinking again about what is my calling at this moment in yeah. my journey, because yeah. purpose shows up over and over again. And it, so goals are met, things are done, things are created, it's wonderful, people are helped. And then suddenly there's that inner voice again that starts speaking again, saying, hey, there's something else. There's something else. Hey, there's else. something else. Right. Maybe you should start a podcast. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. So you're such an inspiration to me. I, um, My story, I had an eating disorder when I was a teenager age 12, I think is when it really started. I was younger than most of my peers. So I was really a follower. I mm -hmm. wanted to be liked. Mm -hmm. I was the youngest of three sisters. Mm -hmm. And the main thing that happened at home was that my dad was really on my sister's case. She was a big person. She was five, almost six feet tall and a big, big person. Uh, looking back, I think she was binge eating because she was unhappy. She never yeah. fit in. Her feet were size 12. She just never really fit yes. in with her peers. So my dad was constantly talking about what she was eating and how many calories. And I was not a big, I was small. I was prepubescent, but I'm also short. I was the considered the runt of my family. and But I took it all in and I realized I didn't want my dad to talk to me like that. That combined with my peers at school all starting to diet and hating their bodies, I just jumped right into it. Sure. And was really good at it. And it's the <laughs> thing up, to do. Right. And in right? three years, I had an eating disorder and stuck with that and yeah. um, got out of it at 21 on my own. No help in those days. It was wow. late 70s, early 80s, early 80s when I good finally decided you. to live. I think I really just realized I wanted to live. And as you were talking about, I thought that I would, I first of all, I never thought I'd get through it. I thought that was my life. And then I got to a point where I realized if that was my life, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. And yeah. so I decided to live. I had dreams that I didn't want to be here. I, um, it was really an intense moment. But it was that voice inside that really kept me going. There was a spark of life that yeah. kept me going. And I pulled through. And Changed my community, changed partners, made new friends, started hanging around with people who didn't talk about their bodies and loved eating food and really enjoyed life. That's and so I think great. it just really kind of brought me to life. And so through my 20s, I was finding myself searching for different things. I got a degree in psychology, thought I'd be a therapist, ended up doing body work and uh, really very deep emotional, emotional release body work and mm -hmm. realized the somatic piece was so important to me. Um, and I found my calling at that time. And I was really helping a lot of people make peace with their bodies. And then that voice started again. Oh, my gosh. And I had a few things where I wasn't listening to my intuitive voice, and my body ended up, actually, my back went out on me because I was going to make a choice to work on a client that wasn't right. And wow. Yeah, it was really an interesting thing. I had a dream about this person, that he was abusing his wife, and oh um, I had worked on him once. I didn't pick up anything at that point, but my hands had. Mm -hmm. And I found out a year later that he was. But my back went out on me before I went, and so that's how I found the no. body positive. Your yeah, my back no. said no. My body it. said absolutely no. Yeah. And I then realized <laughs> I have to change my life. I have to find a whole new career. Oh, my God. And my sister had died from her body image issues and faulty 
see breast implants and hating her body oh. so for so long. Oh my God. And my daughter was a year old at the time. And so I realized I wanted to change the world for her. And that became my purpose. Mm -hmm. And so I look back and I see how the eating disorder, I didn't want it and I wouldn't wish it on anybody. But for me, my life became my life and my path. That's right. And my purpose showed up in that I get to help so many people. Yes. And especially the young ones become free so they can live their yes. lives yes. without that burden and the weight of thinking something's wrong with them. Right. So there's so much more than just your size or just what right. you think right. is your size or your body or whatever, you right. know. Yeah. I love what you just said about um, that you did this for your little girl, yeah. you know, and I feel like for the little girl that you is, you know, your little girl, but also the little girl inside of you right. that had really seen a lot of stuff happening to her sister and to herself. And that's like, you know what? Nobody needs to live like this anymore. This, I need to do whatever I need to do. It's Absolutely. beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And I realize now that having the body positive in my life now, and especially as an aging woman, it's so wonderful because I practice everything I teach daily. That's right. And so as my body's changing again. That's right. It's really fun to be able to learn how to have one of our competencies in our model is cultivate self-love. And so that's, that's right. one that I practice constantly. And and I've realized that I love my body. I, and people talk about maybe you can accept yourself, but you'll never get to self-love. A lot of people say that. I'll never have self-love, but I can accept myself. And hopefully. Yeah. And I realized it's the complete opposite that I love my body. And then there are days when I have trouble with acceptance because of <laughs> all the messages, the crappy messages that come into my right. life about what it means to have skin changes and yeah. an aging body. And so right. so for me, I start with love and then go to acceptance. That is, I love that. It's a yeah. little turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. So practicing the work that we teach all the time is right. really, has been a beautiful thing in my life. Right. I have been struggling with uh, one of my knees and... Um, I notice that when people say, well, is that your bad knee? And I go, my knee is not bad. It didn't do anything wrong. It's just got, it's hurt. You know, oh, it's yeah. just the way that that is. I love my knee anyway. I love, I accept that it's hurting. Exactly. I'm going to try to support it as much as I can and give it what it needs. But it's not bad. And we, we say things like this, we you know, do. we have to listen. Oh, I'm I don't know, you know, it's so insane. We were talking about how, you know, if you go in with a knee problem and there's any weight, quote unquote, weight on you at all, they'll, that's the first thing they'll say. But if you are in a normal range, whatever normal is exactly. for the doctor that you're talking to, they, they don't mention that at all. They never mention it. They never mention right. it. Right, and there's so no insane. mention that people of all sizes have knee problems that's right. or back problems or any, or any problem, problem, quote unquote, problem with their body. But right. if you have any weight yeah. on you, then it's going to be then about it's that. The weight. Yeah, know. one of the people that works with us, uh, she, in, in my book, she has a little story about how she went to the doctor about, for a rash and oh, the, no. the nurse, I think it was a nurse or oh. nurse practitioner started talking about her weight. And we, well, we have to talk to people who have high blood pressure. She said, look at my chart. Do I have high blood pressure? And the woman looked at her chart and then got kind of quiet and she said no but we still have to and then you know, yeah we still person, have yeah to... we still have to talk to you about your weight and she said i have no problems let's talk about why i'm here right oh it's so oh, frustrating I, I don't weigh myself at the doctor partly in solidarity with my friends who me too. are large who get hassled all the time me too yeah and also i don't want to know the number but for me part of it is the piece around i know so many people who have been really harmed by that. Yes, so of I course. Just, I stand by them. Of course. By not getting yeah. Them. Well, I often say that I wanted to think of my weight as a number on a scale, just like I think of the shoe size. You know, I'm not like, oh, God, I'm now I'm wearing a size eight and a half. I better <laughs> slim down my foot. You know, exactly. I don't think like that. Yeah. I just wear whatever size shoe I wear is going to be okay. And I wanted to have that same kind of thing. I don't jump through any hoops to keep this weight. I mean, I... I keep myself healthy and strong, but it's not, I'm not, you know, starving to death in the kitchen. I'm, so, well, and food is such a pleasure in life. And I think one of the things that I realized and coming back to purpose, a purpose for me is, is making beautiful meals. One of, I just 
in my life and sharing with people how wonderful food can be and flavors and textures and I know just the deliciousness of life and I think I that know. right now our society is so tight we are health has become this tight thing and I'm healthy and I'm thin and I'm this and I'm that and I yeah. exercise this way and I'm good it's like your knee you know people exactly. are wanting to be good not feel good they want yes. to be good yes and so part of my purpose is to help everybody just relax a little bit and just realize that we're here. And I think having my sister die when she was 36, uh, it really opened me up. And every day I remember that I'm alive and not everybody is because of hating their body. And yes. I want to live. I'm back to that when I was 21. It's like, I want to live and living isn't attacking my body and stopping myself from eating what I want to eat and just yeah. having pleasure. I think we've lost pleasure. And I love that you're doing this as you are also aging, you know. Yes. I've known you for a really long, a long time. time. It feels like tw it's over 20 it's years over 20 for years. sure. And so you've always had gray hair, I feel yeah, like. that's true. As long as I've known you, which is a, like beautiful. Yeah. And so There's you're a little like, more salt than pepper these days. <laughs> yeah, but still, it was just yeah. always beautiful, curly, gray, salt and pepper hair and... Um, didn't think at all about your age at all. Just that was the color of your hair. Right. And so, and I still don't really, I mean, you look exactly the same to me. <laughs> and, but I know that we're both aging right. and that's a whole other, that tsunami of aging that none of us really <laughs> know about until right. we're in it. And it takes more self-love, more self-care, more self-understanding and appreciation and more acceptance. I have to really realize that this little leg has walked up many, many hills and it can't walk up that many like it used to, but it can do, uh, you know, it's okay. Yes. It's all right. Yeah. There's other things I can do and yeah. I can take care of it and I don't have to be mad at it. Whereas I think when I was, when I had my eating disorder, I was very upset if my body couldn't you know, do a certain thing that I wanted it to do. I was very depressed about that. Right. And now I'm just, well, hmm, I guess maybe this is the way that it is. This is my genetic coding. This yes. is my life experience. It is what it is. Yeah. It's interesting this morning, right before I left to come see you, I was talking with a neighbor who asked me to do a favor for her, and it was just to open something, and she was having trouble opening lanterns because we have this fear of that our electricity is going to go I out. know. And I did it. And then as I was leaving, she said, don't get old. It's really hard. You don't want to get old. And I thought about that as I was walking away. And I turned around and I said, well, the alternative isn't great. So it's I death. think I really do want to get old. <laughs> so I think I'm going to get old. <laughs> It's okay to get old. It's okay. Right. It's okay to get well, old. we're such a fat phobic society yeah. and we're such an old phobic I society. Know. We're I so know. ageist and sexist and racist. I mean, it yes. just I is know. insane to me. You know, we want to hide people like you told the story that you've brought your mother into your home, which is so beautiful. But so many of our mothers and fathers are living in a little tiny room somewhere in a little tiny box somewhere and... It's just we just don't really take care of ourselves or each other we don't. as we get, I don't know, less perfect, you know, right. in a way. And I think it's so sad. I think one of the things about the body positive work that has been really fun for me and just kind of my life purpose is to hear and share and collect stories. Yes. And so my curiosity Every person I meet, I'm curious. Right. And I love meeting people who are different from me and who have different life experiences, whether it's ethnicity or age or size or whatever it is, however we're different or ability, all the different ways that we're different. It's just so fascinating to be able to listen to people and hear their story and connect with people from this way of how can we learn from each other and how can then we have a relationship that is heart to heart that's right based on being two human beings on the planet that's right i love to travel i'm just really blessed that i'm able in my life to travel you know um uh, as much as i can i guess i should say and it is really fun to talk to people in other cultures of you know, they're they're eating bread, for God's sakes, because it's not against the law in their country. Like, 
you know, wow, you're oh, eating bread and butter. Bread and huh. butter. I know, what a concept. <laughs> oh, you're eating pasta. Yes. Wow, you don't care about that, huh? Or, I, know. I don't know. Whatever it is, and it's their food is spread all over the place, and it's like the brainwashing is not there yes. yet. Yes. And not that they don't have other issues, of course, if if you're human, you do. But you're human, you have issues. Can work, you can work through it, but there's not as much. Um, I don't see the whole cleanse thing in in Italy right now. Yes. You know, like yes. they realize they have a liver and they have kidneys, and so their bodies are cleansing themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to go and get a juice for exactly. 50 bucks. You know? 50 dollars. I know it's crazy. And I just, I think that we've lost <clears throat> touch with our bodies in terms of how they can heal inside. Yeah. Well, um, so, coming back to my backstory, I found a book called Healing Back Pain by <gasps> Dr. John Sarno, and it changed me. And it was all about the mind body connection. So, I had been to physical therapist who said, don't do your work, body work. Don't lift up your child. She was three years old. Don't walk on uneven ground. I love to run around in the hills and especially, you know, up and down and around and play and, you know, roots of trees and stuff. And then there was something else. Don't ride in a car. And so I got so wow. afraid and so You'd tight. Be so small. Oh, I couldn't do anything. I thought yeah. my life was over and found this book and it changed me. In three weeks, I was lifting up my child swinging her around I was running through the hills I was playing I was doing my work and it was all about the connection between mind and body and understanding that we get so fearful and then that causes lack of oxygen to the tissue in these oh areas and that's God. what causes pain right and so now I'll have pain and I can actually heal from the inside I can send oxygen to these areas and I can cause pain to go away and and I just I thank my body every day. And my mom, she's 91. She thanks her body every day. And so, yes, it's going to have aches and pains. And as we get older, things are, we're going to have limitations and all this stuff. But how can we he continue to heal from the inside and, yeah. and trust our bodies yeah. to do the work that they can do? That is so great. That is so yeah. great. And like you're talking about putting attention to it and giving right. it love and I don't know, just yes. giving it support and saying, you know, I'm here. I hear you. I get it. Yeah. Here's some breath for you. Right. <laughs> right. Breath. And it's so simple. It's, oh, oxygen. Right. Oxygen right. heals. Yeah. And then Aww. and then coming back to that tight that it's just, oh, it's so painful to watch people. They're, just, they're so afraid. And then that's not healthy to be no. afraid. No. And that causes, what does that do to the body and all the cells? And I just keep thinking of all the cells going, oh. And all this right. anger and fear, oh my God, so ah, and they're all just like tightening up instead of just relaxing and trusting. Yes. And right, it's so yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And your background, I really sort of, I guess, didn't know that that you had this background of the body work. Yes. So no wonder, yes, the body positive comes out of this because it did. we have to like really realize that how great our bodies are. It's a yes. miracle. It is a miracle. The way that, a miracle that we all wake up in the morning and put shoes on. I know. There's it so really many is. things that go, have to go this and this yes. and this. And, yeah. you know, of course, stuff does go kind of like wonky sometimes, but we're human. That's why. Right, right. And coming back to purpose, why are we here? Yeah. And we have a body that allows us to be here. That's what I talk I about know. all the time, especially with young people. I just keep saying, okay, so you have one of these, and that's why you get to be here. So right. you can either be at war with it and fight it the rest of your life, or you can learn to make peace and really honor the ancestors you come from and that this body is this gift to you right. so that you can be here on the planet and live your life. And right. what do you want to do with your life? I know. What's your purpose? Find it. It's so true. And that... Um, um, I don't know when I was struggling with my own eating disorder. I think I would get. I think I think I thought I'd get another body. <laughs> me too. I would like more. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very hard for me to go. Oh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be tall if I start I'm myself. Not, it's yeah, still not going to happen. My I, legs are not going to grow long. No, I'm not going to look like Barbie. <laughs> no. Oh my god. <laughs> So w that was such an acceptance. And I think about that now. It's sort of like, well, it's just what I had to go through because I had people telling me in my life that however way I was was not okay. You know, not only my family, but also my the church I was in, the 
the city I lived in, the world I lived in, it was like, yeah, you're okay, but if you tweak this and this and this, you'll be so much better. So that's your purpose. But when I decided that that wasn't my purpose anymore, my purpose was to heal myself and then listen. That was a real, I think that was a real good awakening. And then we're both still doing that, Connie. That's so wonderful. And look what you've done because of that listening. And both of us coming out of the suffering yes. and choosing to say we're going to change this for other people. Yes. And it's I do it not from an ego place at all. It's just no. that this is so important to me. That's right. I also believe that we are at a time on our planet where we need people to be very focused on what's important. Yes, we There's do. There's a lot of healing of the planet that has yeah. to happen. And so if we're wasting time, I think it is a waste of time. And I'm not saying it's not going to come up. There will be moments where we struggle. But if we can shrink the number of moments that we spend thinking we have to do something about yes. our body yes. and just really take care of it and listen to it and enjoy it right. and get on with and open up to the bigger truth yeah. out There's there. There's so much right. out there that needs to be done. Yeah. And and just thinking about the forces that cause us to think something's wrong with us. Like you say, your family, your church, your town, all of these things. And then advertising and corporations yes. and all the people that make money and right. telling you something's wrong with you. Right. Use my program, do this exercise program, but pay me you know, for this and eat this food or don't eat that. You know, all the diet programs, everything. There's so much money being made that it just drives me crazy. <laughs> That's right. That's all right. All that money's wasted think about what could happen if we put all that money toward education and feeding the hungry people i mean it just i mean really this is what keeps me really going. it drives yeah. me crazy me too. too like we're so worried about um what people are eating or not eating instead of how many people are hungry. hungry i know like why are we here doing this this is a stupid thing when there's this whole other big issue why are there people actually laying on the street sleeping on the corner you know where with are a, they gonna get their meal where are they gonna eat and what kind of food do they get to eat and we're here going oh i don't know if i should eat you know yeah. this uh carb yeah. uh yeah. it drives me insane yeah. you know i had this moment once this was many years ago and it was the real wake up uh i was just starting to work with adults i had been mostly working with kids up to that point and i was talking with one person who had been through my program at her company that had brought me in to do some work. And um, she really got it in the weeks that we spent together. But then I saw her maybe a month or two later. And she said, yeah, I've decided to go back to Weight Watchers. Oh. And oh. Weight Watchers is what started the demise of my sister. If She started at Weight Watchers. And I feel like it's what caused her to die. So I, uh, I said, OK. I couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. I was so sad. I woke up the next morning. I drove my daughter to high school early in the morning. And on the way home, I saw people sleeping on the streets. And I kept thinking, what are they going to eat when yeah. they wake up? And yeah. I just, it almost drove me crazy. Oh. And so I, I still have a project in my purpose. I have a million creative projects. I think mm -hmm. that that's, it's one that hasn't happened yet. But I have this idea for a project that would allow people to heal themselves and then also with proceeds from that to go to feed people Beautiful. so I'm, I'm still working on that Beautiful. one we'll get yeah. there hopefully but it's yeah it's just i want to bring the two issues together and have people see yeah the and juxtaposition of what we're what's happening here it's easy to bring us i mean i think once you're aware and you open up your mind and you yeah. have and you get what your purpose is and how that's going to be so much bigger than you. Yes. My purpose is so much bigger than me, yes. so much bigger than a size six, so yes. much bigger yeah. than uh, a tight face, you right. know, so <laughs> exactly. much bigger than yeah. whatever. Yeah. And it opens up the whole world. It does. You know, it just blows everything open. It does. And then there's no way that you can just be, for me, when I was dieting or eating disorder or whatever, hating my body, I was very closed down. It was mm -hmm. very small. Yeah. This just blew everything open. And I think maybe that's one of the things that was scary to me. What would happen if I really opened up? Right. What would happen if I let go of my eating disorder? Right. Who would I be? Would I, seems like, it, uh, I don't know, I didn't, my identity was around that. So yeah. it's yeah, It's incredible. interesting. Someone said to me, I had already healed, but I wasn't that far out of it. And I was working with my massage teacher, and he said, I was explaining my eating disorder, and he said, oh, it sounds very self-absorbed. And I got really mad, and I was hurt, and I was young, and it didn't, you know, I couldn't take that at the time. And 
And then later I realized, oh, yeah, I was just so focused on every little, I know. every pound, every ounce, every, every pee. pee, every this, every <laughs> that, every grain. Of rice. I mean, it yeah. was just so much about right. me. Right. And to get through that and then see the whole big wor- wide world out there and how yeah. many people are out there and what it's it's been freeing. And, and I'm not judging people who are there because right, of course. I was there That's and I get it. And also it's part of being young too. And yeah. we are more self-absorbed when we're young. Yeah. That's part of the growth process. And it's really wonderful to move through that and then be able to be open. And, yes. and I feel so much more peace because of that. So. That's another blessing of the aging part. It too, is. I think. But I want young people to get some of the things that I had to wait a long time to learn. Yeah. And I feel like if they can get self-love or the practice of self-love yeah. when they're in their 20s, when they're in their teens, then they don't have to waste all the years. That I mean, even after I got over my eating disorder, I was still so hard on myself. Yes. I did not have self-love. I right. thought I had to be perfect in communication and everything else. I was still trying to be the good girl. Yes. And it wasn't until the body positive and working with teenage girls. And one day we were in our group and I realized, wow, they're working so hard on loving their bodies. And I realized I need to still work on loving parts of myself. So I said it out loud and they were so cute. They're like, oh, my God, we're so grateful to hear that because we thought there's this magical point when you're an adult, when it's quote over. unquote, an adult right. when you've got it and we haven't gotten there. And what if we don't get there and then we've failed. And I right. said, no, there's no, this is a lifelong process. That's but right. I wish for you that you get this before, you know, years before I got it. So yeah, go of course. for the self-love piece of now. Course. Yeah, well, I have some of my peer educators, they'll say something like, uh, well, you know, I still have thoughts about, you know, how I'm going to look for, you know, the football game on Friday night. I still am kind of worried about that. Am I not being a very good Beyond Hunter peer educator? And I said, you didn't get a lobotomy. <laughs> you have recovery and you still have thoughts. You have you to learn to have thoughts. Culture, right. You know, they're just thoughts. It's just we can let them go. They're all over the place. How could you not have these thoughts that you're not okay? But you have to counteract that with, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's going to be fine. I can go to the football game and it's going to be fine. It's just so insane. You know, I thought that myself, I thought, well, I would never have a bad thought again. I'd just be happy all the time. That wasn't true. It's so true. upsetting. I know. Too <laughs> bad that we can't just get self-love and stay there. Yeah. Or get to that. Yeah. When I was right. young, I thought, if I get to that perfect place with my body, I'll, I mean, I wrote a poem about this. Am I an object at, you know, which people stare, an object of perfection at which people stare? Or do I want to be a subject in my life? Yes, exactly. Active participant exactly. in the world around me. Exactly. And I think before I thought, yeah, I'll get to be, and I'll be that one dimensional picture That's of right. the model in the magazine. If right. I get there and I'll stay there forever. Yeah. Doesn't not, really. not really. I mean, if if we look at, you know, Oprah, one of the most uh, oh. fantastic, powerful women yes. in the world, that is now on Weight Watchers, you know? Oh, <laughs> oh my that one God. Is very we painful. think, well, God, you know, who are we, little mere mortals, to not still have the struggle? But at least we don't have to believe it. Right. You know, we right. can go, oh, yeah, that's that's an old thought. Wow, oh, that's weird. That's yes. still there, huh? Right, exactly. Like, oh, look at you. Look oh, at hi, that. little person inside. <laughs> you need attention. So, and exactly. what I realize is that little me inside, like you said, doing it for my own little girl inside besides my daughter, I see my little self all the time. And I talk to her and I realize, oh, interesting story I uh, about kind of aging and then my little self eating disorder itself. I, this is several years ago, but I was on a street and I was wearing shorts. And this woman went by in a car slowly and she said, you shouldn't wear shorts like that with legs that look like yours. And what? my Real. eating disorder was all about my thighs, having strong, big thighs. And so I, I had made peace with them. I was totally fine with them. And so then here it comes back, you know, this woman saying my aging thighs are ugly is basically what it was. So then I went, I, I wasn't sure if it had happened almost. I, right. And, and then so I realized shocking. this is what happens to people all the time, especially people who are fat, um, getting harassed on the street. That's right. And so I went into the store. I came out. I didn't tell anybody about it until a week later. I was doing a presentation, a talk at a university, and it was in my town where I grew up in Chico. And 
I talked about it. I said, so this is what happened to me a week ago. And today I got here and I was, when I was eating disordered, I used to run in the park and that was my thing in this big, beautiful park. And I was running all over the place and, but I was doing it as, you know, trying to <laughs> hurt my, you know, right. change my body. And so that night I had gotten to town and I, and I wanted to go for a run and I wasn't sure if I should put on shorts for a moment. I had this moment. I looked in the mirror and I yeah. went, F it. I'm going to go put on my shorts and go run in the park. And as I was running, I was talking to my eating disordered young self who had been there. That was the last time I'd run there. And I just said, so look at us. Look, amazing. We're still running. And way years later, bigger. Yeah, you know, still strong. But look at this. And let's talk about the life that we've had and how it's oh, been. And it's, it's so okay. And, and I got to talk about that that night at the, talk, oh. you know, at the talk I was doing. And it was really inspirational to be able to share that story with people. But... It was, yeah. So using the, the suffering as a, tool as a tool to grow. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe that person who said that, you know, is so unhappy with her own self right. or whatever. But she was, it's like the Dalai Lama says, the Chinese are his, is his greatest teacher. So right. she was exactly. your teacher. Yes. You know, it's hard yes. to say thanks so much for that, but it's kind of true. But we have to. Yeah, yes, I mean, I, I have know. to. I right. choose to because right. to me, things that go wrong. I just had an experience yesterday that wasn't about my body at all, but it was this awakening, which is why I'm so glad to be here because it brought up my fear around my future because of pieces with the body positive and finishing a project, what's yeah. next. And yeah. so I was talking to my mom and I just said, oh, wow, yeah, I have fear and this anxiety that I'd had that morning and an experience where I was not my best self, I, uh, I used it and I said, thank you. Yeah. Immediately. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, this opened. And since then, literally everything's been opening. Like, it's like of the course. universe is just rewarding me. Of course. Open my email. There's the perfect email. I get to sit and talk with you about exactly. purpose. You know, everything exactly. it just opens right up exactly. to lead to, oh yeah, life is great. Yeah. Well, there's that, uh, part in our book it's not about food of we when we're presented with a miracle or we're presented with something we can either just go ahead and accept it and just be with it or we can step around it and right. a lot of my life I wanted to step around it because like I just don't have time to deal with this crap right now so yes. now I just go we might as well just go head on into it and see yes. what happens exactly <laughs> so good for you <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean it's gonna happen anyway we might as well get on board right you right. know and one of the things my mom always tells me and has all throughout the years I couldn't have done the body positive running a nonprofit without her. She, I would call and say, "Oh my God, I blew it! I did this." Yeah, she's like, "Oh, good, you made a mistake. You're gonna Yay. learn something." Yay. I know, I know. So, like, ah. But yeah. yes, it's true. That's the best way to learn. I know. I have people that come into for therapy and say, "Oh, you know, I lost my job. My husband left with another woman, and uh, my house is getting um, is gonna be repossessed by the bank." It's like. Oh, good. Now it can work. <laughs> <laughs> this is when it will be good to exactly. do it. Exactly. Yeah. What comes out of all of that? Exactly. So um, I want to have you read the last part of this, the little for today. I will. Today, I will find some time to ask myself the questions, what higher purpose might I have? What can I bring into my life that would bring me joy inspire me and feed my soul. I will listen to my inner voice and honor whatever thoughts, feelings, and ideas that come to me. Oh, so beautiful. Thank you for being here and having this wonderful conversation about purpose. And, you know, I know that both of us have been on purpose about a lot of things and um, and we still have more roads to go, for sure. More roads to no, go. No, whatever happens. More and books to write. More yeah. podcasts That's to do. Right. And people more, to talk to. More meals to cook. More meals to cook. Yeah. More joy to have. So I'm so blessed that you were here today. And thank I you, really Lily. appreciate you being here. It's an honor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And be sure and follow me on Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and it's not about food.com. Thanks.